Welcome back to Power Lunch. Crypto is also tumbling today amid the global sell-off. Bitcoin down more than 9%, and it's near that level now, falling below 50,000, back up to 53. Uh, the crack below 50 was the first time since Feb. It's down 13% since Saturday. Our next guest says it's in part because crypto is open seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and it was the only venue for investors to express their concerns over the weekend. Joining us for more is Michael Busella, co-founder and managing partner at Neo Classic Capital, an investment firm specializing in digital assets, crypto, and blockchain. Mike, it's good to see you. I, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, we love being able to kind of uh, gauge risk through Bitcoin, but how did Bitcoin itself become so, um, you know, beta and, and risk on and risk off? Do you think this is what the founders and, and creators wanted? It's, yeah, so good to see you again, Kelly. I mean, the reality is this is a situation where Bitcoin has become a macro asset. Everything else in crypto, aside from a few higher quality altcoins, we'll call them, Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, the like, has become more of a macro play. And so it's become a liquid macro asset. And now we're in a macro environment where bad news is just bad news. And you can, you know, speculate. It's all informed speculation, whether it's the Middle East, the yen carry, the, you know, the, the, the over allocated growth trade. Basically, the world was wrong way. Uh, economic data compounded the fact of the matter. And, and we saw a risk off environment. On the weekends, Bitcoin is the only asset or one of the only assets you can actually trade uh, to take that view. And so, you know, we woke up this morning to a lot of panic. I think panic is a result of two things, leverage and strategy drift. And I think we saw a lot of people overposition themselves from a leverage standpoint, and I think misposition themselves from a strategy standpoint. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we still in the in the day and age where we can say, do the do the purest holders want to get the leveraged institutional money out of it or do they care anymore? <laughs> do they just want it to go up? And what do you make of the fact that gold has out basically been steadier than Bitcoin throughout periods like this? And it will continue to be. I mean, same thing. So the last two, everyone talks about the VIX moves, you know, in the last 24 hours. And we were at levels not seen since 2020 and 2008. To show you how much crypto's grown since then, in 08, we didn't exist, so it didn't matter. But in 2020, there was a point where we thought, you know, this, the price of Bitcoin from just a market structure standpoint could potentially go to zero. And we've seen the same level of volatility, according to the VIX index, and a what I would consider, which is a bizarre concept to most people in traditional markets, a relatively benign reaction relative to the volatility of the broader market. Um, and so that just goes to show you how far the market structures come from hot, super, super high levels of speculation to primarily, again, just going back to what's happened with the ETFs and a bit more of institutional ownership, uh, what's happened with Bitcoin. I mean, this if this type of environment occurred, this isn't the GFC, this isn't the world shutting down, but it is the same level of volatility as measured by the VIX. Um, you, you would have thought you'd seen a much more exacerbated uh, move from that. You're sort of t touching on what I want to ask about. I mean, Bitcoin was roughly 70,000, wasn't it, within the last two or three weeks, uh, and now it's in the 50s. Uh, is Bitcoin an investor's asset or a trader's asset? It's both. Um, so, you know, full, full disclosure, I per you know, you personally, the idea is you compound high-quality digital assets, Bitcoin being the primary one. Uh, you also can trade these assets. I mean, some of the greatest trading vehicles, depending on your asset size, are things like cryptocurrencies. And a lot of what's happening below Bitcoin, below high quality alts, a lot of that long tail of alts is what we call PVP. It's player versus player, crypto native capital. And the overall market cap doesn't grow that much, but the capital markets flow within, within crypto. I think when you think about the hedge fund industry, things like Bitcoin, things like the basis trade has been a fantastic trade for many folks. Things like Bitcoin miners and, and Bitcoin related stocks are super volatile. And so for hedge funds, that makes a lot of sense to trade. But for purposes of the audience, the, the general audience of, of this program, you want to compound over time. And I think if you're in a position where you have you haven't over levered yourself and haven't positioned yourself in an area of the market you're unfamiliar with and you've overexposed yourself to that area, I think that's the only time you get into trouble because at this point in time, you know, our firm, for example, we have no current exposure to Bitcoin or Ethereum. I personally have exposure to Bitcoin and Ethereum. I compound that over the years and I've continued to do that. And I've recommended that to anyone that I know that invests their own capital. Um, but there's a lot of things that occur in the market on a day-to-day -day basis that, you know, make from, from, from the speculative portion of your portfolio would make you reduce risk in a certain asset. And so, I'm not saying this is not a time to be buying. As a matter of fact, I think this is a great time to be buying. As I said, in December of 2018 on CNBC, when Bitcoin was trading at 3,300, it just yeah. means doesn't 
don't basically don't go out there and buy your entire lot on a day like today. All right. 12, 20 percent in Coinbase shares, by the way, at 189. They were at 250 a week ago. Uh, so there's been a lot of pain. Mike, for now, thanks. We appreciate it.